So what's going on guys? Welcome to Grizz Zombies. My name is Violent. Today we're going to be talking about Black Ops 3 and there's an interview done by Jason Blundell and NoahJ456. Full link to it in the description box below. Make sure to check that out. Um, it's hard to talk about that without giving some of the game away, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think, you know, going into the future there's going to be new stuff. There's going to be stuff which um, is going to uh, challenge the kind of zombie community in one way um, but I, I believe and I hope that we've built up trust and we've built up um, a level of the fact that we, we're here to kind of service fans and help fans but with that comes challenges we, we have to challenge the community at times so do, do I think that's going to you know that, that's going to that's going to take moments for people to kind of readjust in the same way that when we showed shadows for the first time we thought, oh, how, how are people going to respond to this? How are they going to deal with it? Um, there's this expectation that you kind of carry on doing the same thing, right? right. Um, sometimes you need to move away from that. Sometimes you need to break with expectation. And so um, I'm not sure. I don't know. But I, I do know it's very exciting and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's different. And um, yes, I, I, I hope that people will, you know, going into whatever happens next, mm -hmm. will look back and say, okay, Good decisions were made. Mm -hmm. So Revelations has quite a few different takes that you can have on the ending, whether it's good or not. Treyarch is kind of hoping that you believe that they have their best intention when it comes to where the storyline is going, and they're hoping that the choices they made will be worth it. So that's pretty much what we learned about the reaction from Jason Blundell and Revelations. I know a lot of people wanted some sort of reaction from Jason Blundell, so there it was. Now let's move on to the next section. We tried in all in all uh, all aspects to be authentic to the original experience, mm -hmm. and then there were certain systems that we added because obviously that's changed since you know World War to, to let's say Black Ops Three. Yeah, exactly. So there were certain natural changes that had to be done, but um, uh, we tried to be authentic to the original maps as much as we could, and then we put little kind of little flares in, little you know little things, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully it's as one to one as we get it but with the benefit of, of the extra hardware and, and then updating the mechanics. Yeah. In terms of the statement of do they replace or, 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 or sit in companion, um, I won't make a comment on that. Okay. So for the main Easter eggs of Zombie Chronicles, what Jason Blundell is saying is that he wanted to stay as true to the original as possible, but what he did fail to tell us is if the storyline for Zombies Chronicle is canon right now in our story post-revelations. So we did not get confirmation on that, but we have strong hints that that's true. That's a really deep uh, philosophical question you're posing me there. No. And not one that you wish to comment on at this time. That was the biggest stretch. Don't worry, they, 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 don't get, they, don't get as, they don't get as detailed as that from here. That's very good. So basically what Noah asked him is if there's something bigger in Zombie Chronicles than the main Easter eggs, or just the max ammo that we're getting from the hide and seek easter egg. As you know on every map there's a hide and seek easter egg that gives you a max ammo. Is there anything more than that? And he said that's a very philosophical question and so we didn't really get a good answer on the super easter egg at this moment in time. Um, I think you're good. I think you're good. Okay, that, that gives me so much peace I can sleep tonight and <laughs> thank you for releasing me. Um, so what Jason's referring to is the dead Margwell heart that we're seeing after we kill the Shadow Man in Shadows of Evil. You actually kill one of the purple Margwells, he drops a dead Margwell heart. And we've all ran over it, picked it up, nothing's actually came of it. We heard that the cocoon easter egg in Shadows of Evil was never coming to fruition. And Jason Blundell just confirmed that we're good. We don't need to explore that anymore. It's done. It is what it is. What, what's happening with M1911? Gonna put it back in. Ah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, let, me, let me give you. Let me add, add the AK as well. Oh. Uh, uh, simple story is, uh, this wasn't ready in time. Mm -hmm. This wasn't ready in time. Every time we add something in, we have to test everything. And you have a period of submission that you've got to kind of get in. You've got a QA before that point. Mm -hmm. Yes, we knew we were making it. Yes, we wanted to get the zombie community for it, but it just wasn't ready in time. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd have to then basically offset all your release schedules. Try and it wasn't. That significant thing that delay everything yeah. to get. So after uh, after Xbox comes out, 
the, I think the next TU title update after that, it'll, it'll go in. It'll drop in. So there you have it. Finally, the real reason why the M1911 and the AK-74U, not the actual AK-47, I did get that auto-corrected by some people on Twitter, so I appreciate you guys helping me out over there. The AK-74U is coming to Black Ops 3. It just wasn't ready yet, so now we have official confirmation as to why that's happening. And I really like these Treyarch interviews that are happening. We actually have a chance to ask the creator himself some stuff. That's a great question. Um, so the Cronorium, and there was a little bit of copy that went out. I'm not sure where it went out, but I'll say it here in case people missed it because I've not seen people reflecting on it, mm -hmm. which is that the, the Cronorium is also dependent upon the reader of it. Really? So... Basically, when you open it and look into it, it basically gives you that from the point of view of the person who is reading it. Now, that reminds me of the Mirror of Arista in Harry Potter, where you could see your best self, your most prime self, in the mirror just by looking in it. Now, the Cronorium is like that. It's designed for the individual, and so it's how Richthofen perceives these universes is what we're seeing, because he's the one that signed it in the left corner. Yeah. Can, can, can we have an animation? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I love what they, they did with Overwatch and kind of fleshing out kind of backstory. Mm -hmm. And it, um, um, you know, the boring part of the answer is it's a it's a it's a resource investment question about mm -hmm. what you're going to get your guys to do and the kind of involvement. You know, those IGCs, um, be the front or the back or wherever you put them, or the, or the music videos or the the campfire pieces that we did. Um, take a certain amount of resource and planning and energy to kind of pull off. Uh, yeah. And we really kind of pushed it on, on Black Ops 3. I was really happy on the fact that we went further than we've ever gone before in terms of dedicated video assets. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did the campfire pieces with the music videos, right. every intro and outro. Um, I was really happy on the volume. Um, would I like to do more? Sure I would, absolutely. Um, it just has to make developmental sense. So there you have it, that's the last clip I'm gonna show you guys. If you wanna see the full video by NoahJ456, it'll be linked in the description box below. Shout out to him for actually accomplishing this. We got a lot of different answers in this video. And drop a like if you guys enjoyed this type of content and subscribe for zombies updates and patch notes. That's what I provide to the channel. So I'll see you guys next time. Violent out.